on? My name's Lorenz Monsoon Larkin. Uh, I'm, I live in Riverside, but I fight out of Moreno Valley, California, at, uh, at Icon MMA, uh, formerly known as MAI. The way I got into MMA is um, I start doing a little bit of boxing. My mom put me in boxing when I was uh, when I was young. And, you know, I only I only did it for a couple months and then got out of it. And um, tried football out when I was in high school and sucked at it so I kind of strayed away from there because uh, you know my dad was kind of like my mom and my mom was kind of like my dad because he didn't want me to get into any type of contact sports so, you know like growing up I played like flag football you know so that didn't really help me out when I got the pads on in high school so anyway I strayed away from there and then I tried boxing again when I was in high school and then uh, kind of stuck with it but I was never able to fight so I was kind of like a your gym rat, you know, and uh, I was just getting beat up in sparring sessions and, and just kept doing it, you know, and, um, and then uh, I started getting into MMA a little bit because I started watching on TV and then uh, went to a couple of different gyms, you know, nobody really wanted to take me serious and uh, tried going to a couple of different places, but just nobody, pretty much nobody wanted to work with me and then uh, I came, I, I lived out in Riverside, I moved out to Riverside, back out to Riverside. And then one of my buddies told me about this gym, so I came in and he introduced me to Sam. Sam took me on and um, we started out boxing and kickboxing and then he got me into my first amateur boxing match. And then I uh, went from there, you know, and then uh, unfortunately I had to go to Kentucky and then uh, fight amateur out there. So I knocked out 10 amateur fights within a year. Moved back, turned pro, which was in uh, August of old, no. Yeah, August of 09, I had my first uh, pro fight and then just kept working hard at it, you know. It's, it's not like I come from a big gym or it was easy for me to get on the big show. I had to take the long road, you know, and, uh, and it's, it, I, I take a lot of credit from, you know, my team, my family being behind me, you know. Most of my family's been at every single pro fight that I've had, you know, and uh, I just had to grind and grind and grind, you know. It's, it, you know, most most MMA fighters they <clears throat> they talk about their hard upbringing. You know, my upbringing wasn't hard. You know, I had to, my parents were split up, but you know, it, I didn't ever had no problems like that. It was the hardest thing was when I finally got into the whole sport and the business side around MMA. <clears throat> as far as getting onto the big show, you know, not everybody's promised getting there. You know, it just it, it really takes hard work and dedication. You know, and, and keep fighting, keep fighting. And, Keep getting out there and just and just not worrying about the big show. Just keep fighting. You know, it took me. It took to uh, my ninth fight. It took nine professional fights to even and to even for me to even be considered to be in strike force. You know, and uh, and and it's not even like I'm not even gonna say that strike force wanted me right then and there. You know, I was a, I was a backup. I was a last minute replacement for uh, San. Son told is she or, or something like that. I don't, I don't know his name, but he was supposed to fight Scott Lighty. You know, I was the last minute player. I took the fight on uh, a week and a half notice. So you know, it's nothing never promised to me, but that, that's the hard road that I had to take to get to where I'm at right now. Um, people that influenced me, you know, it's, it's pretty much my mom, and my dad. You know, um, they they stood behind me, you know, when I first started, and, and they're still behind me now. And, and, and Maybe my dad wasn't too much into it in the beginning, but he sees that you know I'm doing good, and and now he, I mean, he's 100% behind me. But you know that's what I expect. He's my dad, so you know that's the best thing that I can have for me. You know, it's both of my parents behind me 100%, and and that's most of the things I care about. You know, that as far as people that I look up to. To me, what it means to be a fighter is um, you know, it's just hard dedication. You you, you can't see the the thing I like about this sport and I think that fits me a lot is because I wouldn't I wouldn't want to say I'm not a team player because you know I have a team and they help me out a lot but as far as anything that I slack off on it shows you know if I don't practice and I don't do the things I'm supposed to be, be doing you know it, it reflects in the ring so you know everybody that that's on a higher level they train you know and that's the thing about being a fighter you have to train you have to Keep learning. You have to keep evolving because if you don't, it's going to show in the ring, and, and there's no way of hiding it, and there's no way of getting around to it. You, if if you train hard, 
and 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 you do what you're supposed to be doing, then you're gonna get those W's, you know. And uh, that's what I like about it, because it's 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 you, you know. It, it, if you don't do what you're supposed to be doing, it's gonna show, and, and everybody's gonna know that that you didn't train, or if you gas out, that's because you weren't training hard and, and, and you weren't conditioning, and it's all it, it goes on you. It's your fault. It's not your team's fault. It's it's it's, it's your fault, you know. And, that's why I like about it, you know, because there's two people that train their ass off and, and get in the ring and, and and put both of their camps and, and, and all of their training sessions together in one at one particular time, you know, and go at it. And the best fighter out of, at that time wins. How all my training camps go is just, um, you know, a, a lot of a lot of different places do do their camps different. You know, we start out we start out slow, you know. And, and build up and build up and, and by the time that fight time's here I'm at my highest peak you know and and, and that that's how I think that I get to where I'm at and, and I feel the greatest when I'm in the ring because you know we don't burn the, my, my team doesn't tend to burn me out in, in my camps you know it's it's like once when I feel like I'm I'm ready that's the time that's when I'm stepping in the ring you know it, it just everything's a build up in camp we don't just start out blasting and they don't, they don't tend to start out blasting me and have me go through all these crazy, crazy exercises and crazy drills, you know, it's it just, they, they build me up and we go slow and by the time the fight time comes, I'm at my peak and I'm able to perform at 100%. Now some of my favorite moves are just the, my spontaneous ones, They're the ones that just come out of the blue, like a, maybe a hammer fist to the, to the leg, you know, or, or um, the mantis strike that you guys seen not so long ago, that's a kick that I, I threw, you know, earlier or later on in the segment, whichever, whenever it comes, but that, that's called the mantis strike, so Brandon Bender, yeah, I'll show it to you one day. My goals in MMA is just to, no matter where I'm at, if I'm in strike force or if I'm in the UFC, just be established, established fighter, you know, some, I just don't want to be that fighter where that, they come into the organization and and they fight two times and then they leave, you know, and nobody's never heard of them again after that, you know. <clears throat> I just want to be an established fighter, you know, I want to be that <clears throat> person where you talk about that organization and my name pops up, you know. And that's that's the only thing that I ask for, you know. I, I don't, I'm not asking you to hold the bell or anything like that. I just want to be that guy that people know that you're not a, a slouch, you know, and, and it's a hard fight. And it is, it's a guy to be, uh, just a guy or a fighter to be reckoned with, you know, in that organization and, and somebody that's going to stay there for years and years and years. The difference between, you know, Strike Force and, and your smaller regional shows, which are still pro, you know, and, um, it's just the cameras, you know, cameras, lights, you know, people doing interviews, you, radio stations calling you, you know, it's, it's, it's more of the, I say the biggest thing for a fighter is, is not so much the competition, but all the lights on you and all the people, you know, and all the big venues. Because, you know, you're used to going and maybe fighting at a hall or, or, or a little convention center, you know, and, and that probably holds like a thousand people at that to fighting at stadiums, you know, and, and fighting in front of 4,000 people and 5,000 people and you have big old cameras in your face, you know, and, and warming up, and people doing interviews with you, and people coming up to you, seeing you from, it's like, oh yeah, you know, I've seen you on TV, and that, that's, that's the thing that, that changes, you know, and, 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 and that plays a big part of it, and, and not just that, is your competition, you know, you have, now you're fighting people from different countries, you know, and, and people that are the best of the best at what they do, you know, and that's why you're there, it's, it's just like, you know, going from, college and then all of a sudden now you're in the NFL you know and 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 it takes a little toll on you know but you, if you're there for the right reasons then you should have no problem because you're there because you're at the top of your game too so it's just kind of like going from college to the NFL you know it's, it's a good experience and you should, something that you gotta get used to. Where I see the UFC going or just period MMA is just um to the top you know is, is I look at the thing how, how I look at MMA is as always from a business aspect because you, you have to look at it from a business aspect because that's the thing that's gonna make the sport evolve as far as your big endorsements you know and um, and being that UFC is the the biggest that you can get is um, 
you know, everything is coming into place, you know, you know, they have Bud Light as a sponsor and, and all these big Fortune 500 companies that, that are, that will be in the MMA, you know, within five years. That's only better for the fighters, you know, because that's bigger paydays, you know, and, and I hope eventually one day we can get paid just like your big time boxers, your Mayweathers, your Pacquiao's, you know, your, your Mike Tyson's at the time, you know, it's just, um, I see that's where the sport's going, you know, it's, it's growing and, and a lot of people are getting into it, you know, and unfortunately boxing is getting boring because, you know, it's just, there's so many politics in it that it's starting to dilute the sport, but that's when uh, we come in and hopefully we take that over and, and take over those paydays and, and those pay-per-view big time fights, you know, and, uh, and just grow from there. What's up guys, Coach Sam here again. Anyways, we're talking about the uh, Monsoon and uh, his training and so forth here with me. Actually, Monsoon, Lorenz Larkin has been training with me probably about four years. So when he came here, he's pretty green. Uh, we started him with a stand-up. We um, started everything with stand-up. We're a very um, fast movement style of fighting. Uh, very aggressive, timing oriented speed. Uh, started off with boxing, put him in boxing. Uh, he boxed five amateur matches. Actually, he went into a big tournament called the Desert Showdown. He won the heavyweight, started in the heavyweight division. And then we decided to do 10 amateur uh, MMA fights uh, before we decided to go pro. So our plan was 10 amateurs, then turn pro. So we got the 10 in. And by the way, he went undefeated as an amateur boxer. He also went undefeated as a heavyweight MMA fighter. Had some very good fights. Did a few, a uh, couple five rounds, five minute five rounds, uh, uh, championship matches and so forth. Uh, then we turned pro, started fighting here locally in Southern California on some of the local shows. Our plan as an amateur was 10 good amateur fights and then turn pro. And uh, that's basically what we did after the 10 fight. Uh, we turned pro once again undefeated as an amateur. Uh, so now he's 15 and 0 as an amateur, going into his professional career. Um, same thing, 10 fights as a pro and then we wanted to go for strike force, maybe move up to UFC. And it's funny how it worked out because our actual 10th fight was a replacement fight. We got on strike force and we did a, a fantastic showing, very exciting fight. And uh, we fought against again again since then. So we're 11 and 0 as a pro. So it's like as far as his MMA career, I guess that's 21 and 0. Majority of his fights have ended by knockout, usually in the first round. Next fight's going to be in Vegas on the uh, uh, Strike Force Challenger Series we're looking for. So it's going to be in September. We don't have a date or opponent yet, but we're already gearing up for it. Uh, we're training hard. We do a cross train with a lot of different schools. We train here very hard. Uh, earlier we were over at Millennia training with the boys over there. Uh, we've been working with Dan Henderson a little bit at uh, Team Quest, getting him ready for his next fight. So he's getting a lot of good exposure. Um, as you, you guys watch him fight, he's a very exciting fighter. Uh, looking for a lot of great things in the future. We're not trying to rush. We're taking our time. We're not worried about trying to get up there and get any type of uh, championship bouts quite yet. Uh, we want to continue. We got a lot longer and a lot more uh, work to do, things to achieve. But uh, we're pretty excited on uh, how we're meeting our goals. We're hitting what we just what we uh, planned on doing. So uh, hopefully we'll still remain undefeated in, in the future. We'll keep pushing along. Uh, Keep your eyes open for us and uh, keep watching us. You can catch him on his uh, Twitter and all that other cool stuff. All right, now I'm just trying to get him in the corner. And you see, when I kicked him in the shoulder and pivoted off right there, most guys, you know, uh, they, they just stay right there in the pocket and, and they're susceptible to getting hits. But the best way is when you throw the kick or the punch, whatever pivot out so you're able to be in the pocket still but not susceptible to hits you know right in this line of fire now Tony's starting to pressure me and put me against the corner once you see that back turn you know something like a back uh, a back spin kick or, or a back, back uh, spinning back fist is coming you know the best way is not to back out of it just to come into it because you're you, you follow his back wherever his back turns you follow it just like that, and you won't be susceptible to a spinning back fist or a spinning back kick. What's going on, guys? We're going to go over the, two of the moves that you've seen in my sparring session. Uh, 
That's my head coach, Sam Mason. What's up? <laughs> so uh, we're gonna go over the first one, which was uh, when you when you throw the, when you throw any type of kick, you don't want to be right there in the impact zone. So if I was to throw, say a head kick, I don't want to stay right here because I'm susceptible to anything, any type of hooks, punches, kicks. So what you see in one of the corners of the ring was when I throw the kick, ooh, I pivot out. So now I'm right here and I throw my straight hook, or I go for my shot, or anything like that. So any, any, anything like that, any type of kicks you want to pivot off. And then, so you have that angle on there, put it and you could throw a straight hook, go for the takedown or whatever, anything like that. The second move was, uh, Tony threw a spinning back kick. So the worst thing to do when, when somebody's throwing a spinning back kick is stay here, and you're gonna eat it, and you'll probably lose because that's a hard kick. Or if he, if he throws it coming out of it, and he's still, he's still gonna catch you. The best way, and it seems kind of funny because the best way is to get out of the move is to go into the move. So once when his back turns, I'm coming into him. So there's a couple different things. You come, I go for the takedown, or I come, boom, pivot it out. And then I still got his back. But yeah, the worst thing to do is when guys go for it, boom, they get surprised and they stay there and they take the kick or the guy throws a spin in back fist and, it, and then it's all lights out from there. So the best way to go into that move, any type of spinning back fist or spinning heel kick, is to go into it, follow their back. If he goes for a spin back, follow on his back. If he goes the opposite way, follow on his back. So that's the way, best way to go for those moves. At the end of my career, I just want to be remembered for putting on that guy that always put on exciting fights, you know, and, and, and still being watched, you know, when, when I'm old and dead, you know, little kids looking at me and be like, wow, you know, that was, that was a great fighter at that time, you know, and I just want to be remembered like how, how Mike Tyson is, you know, I still look at Mike Tyson fights, I'm like, damn, you know, that, that guy was a beast back then, you know, and that's how I want to be looked at, you know. I, Hopefully, you know, I, I get to take a belt, you know, and, and leave out leave out of MMA still smart, you know, <laughs> not retarded. And, uh, you know, just not really messed up, you know, and, and just leave out hum, uh, humbled, you know, and, and just be remembered for all, all the good things that I did, you know, and, and hopefully not, no losses. <laughs> so, you know, however it goes, you know, I, I'll be happy with however I leave MMA. One more thing guys, I was, uh, we are moving to a 10,000 square foot location right out here in the Riverside, Marino Valley area. Any of you guys that are bangers that live in the um, Inland Empire looking for a gym to come train at, you want to get some good training, some good coaching, some good management, get your fights set up, please come by, check us out, we'd love to take a look at you. We're always bringing in new fighters and, and new team people. Our new location is going to be off of the uh, 215 and um, else not elseworth but eucalyptus but anyways our number is 951-683-8756 if you have any, any questions regarding training what have you feel free to give us a call we'd love to talk to you about whatever your mixed martial art needs might be once again thank you uh, mma life for coming down to our gym and checking us out and we'll see you guys in the future uh some of the people i'd like to thank is uh, my team Sam Mason, Arnold DeWitt, Tony Giannopoulos, you know, my, my gym, uh, Icon MMA, formerly known as MAI, which we're in the midst of changing things, but anyway, um, Hostility Clothing, Splat Hair, hair Dye, uh, Extreme Auto Works, Cali Life, Lowrider Tattoo, Riverside, California, and MMA Life TV for doing this, you know. Um, I just like to thank all my fans out there. And, if you're watching this, thanks. I appreciate it. It's all the support that I need from you guys, you know, and, and, and you guys are helping me out and getting me to a better place. So, it's, everybody, thank you. Do you guys like to watch the UFC? Because <laughs> yeah. guess what? Lou and I we are bringing it. the UFC 
To you. You better believe it, What man. are we going to do? Well, for everybody in the 09 area code in California, we're bringing the My MMA Mobile Viewing Party Tour. Yes, and we are kicking off the tour in Rancho Cucamonga at Buffalo Wings and Rings. Oh, it's going to be amazing. We're going to have My MMA Mobile girls there for you guys to take pictures with. We're going to have fighters. Oh, we're going to be signing autographs. We're going to have raffles. And there's a mystery grand prize in we, the works. We can't talk about it. We can't talk about it yet, but... Involve the UFC? You will love it. You will definitely love it. You so, guys uh, really want these... Uh, this. Definitely. Mystery so, prize. We want to see you guys there at the viewing party. And uh, bring all your friends, too. Now, if you need more info on it, you could go to MyMMAMobile.com or you could email us at MyMMAMobile at gmail.com. And just let us know that you want to go. That'll be amazing. There's going to be VIP service to subscribers only. So, keep your eye on the text because we're going to be giving you the information whether you're going to reply yes to where you're going to be coming to the viewing party or yes, you'd like to have the viewing party in your area. So uh, if you see the text about the viewing party, make sure you reply. My MMA Mobile, the viewing party tour, baby. Woo! Let's make it happen. <laughs>